My name is Elina Broteris. I'm an artist of Finnish origin from Finland and my media are photography and moving image. In this exhibition at Arte I'm presenting a photographic piece and uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, recent video works. The, the photo piece, it looks like a series. There's 45 parts, but actually it is one work. So it's indissociable. You cannot take them apart and, and use them separately. It's one work. It's called L'Arche de Vue, Hommage à Eric Satie, which has given the title for this whole exhibition. L'Arche de Vue uh, is one of the instructions that the French composer Eric Satie gave to the musician how to play in one of his compositions. Uh, there are many of them. There are actually 45 instructions. That's why there are 45 photographs in this piece. Because as a young girl, I play the piano and I, I play this piece together with my teacher because it's for the piano, but for two players, for four hands. And I was very intrigued by Satie's instructions because they are not what we are used to having in music, like uh, in Italian, like uh, Andante Moderato or Piano Pianissimo, etc. They are very poetic. They are rather weird, sometimes funny. And uh, the thing is that you know, I was, I was young and I didn't speak French, of course, and neither did my teacher, nor did his wife. Nevertheless, his wife translated the instructions in Finnish with the help of a dictionary so that we could know how the composer wishes us to play. So I have these sort of loose, even more poetic maybe, and sometimes a little bit mis interpreted translations of the original Sati words. I have them in my mind since I was something like 11 or 12 years. Of course, I had no idea at the time that I would become an artist and that I could maybe use this sometime in my artistic work. And I cannot recall when the idea came to me that I actually could really use these these sati instructions. Was I already in art school? Had I graduated? I can't remember. What I do remember is that when I got nominated uh, for an art prize in Finland called Ars Fennica in 2005, and I needed to produce some new work, that's when I got the idea that, okay, now I will, I will take these words that have traveled with me for so many years, and, and I will do an artwork about and around them. So what I did was that I took all the words in the order of appearance in the music, and uh, then I paired them, each of them, with a photograph. Either I made a picture directly to the words, or I found something in my archives, a picture that I had not used for anything else, and then I found a correspondence between a certain instruction and that certain picture. So there is a logic uh, behind what we see in the image and what we read in the words, but it's not, um, you know, it's not a scientific logic. It's something that is intuitive and um, yeah, it's like a fuzzy logic. I, I, can, I see myself why I have done these pairings, but of course you could do them in 1000 different ways and you could choose other pictures, etc. So in a way, this was the first time I was working in, in this way of taking some other artists work and using it to trigger my own work. Then much later I have used it in a more methodical way when I have started to revisit Fluxus artists' event scores.
like I do in some of the video work that I have here in the exhibition. L'Arche de Vue is, for me, it's, um, it's an important piece because in a way it's kind of like the, like the breaking point between my time as a young artist and then what I am now. In a way it was like a sort of like a, on the verge of, of being a more mature artist and, and looking back into what I had produced on the first, let's say, 10, 12 years of, of my, my career. So what you see there are many themes that uh, have appeared in my work and it sort of summarizes my visual language. In quite many pictures you see a human figure and uh, if, if you know my work, you know that most often it's me. Sometimes I appear in my work as really as, as Elena, the artist, the person, the human being, like telling something real about my life. More often I appear as somebody who is more like a model to an artist, like a human figure, but not autobiographical in any way. L'Arche de Vue is sort of in between the two because when I look at them, when I look at the pictures, I remember, I recall so many moments that kind of happened to me in my life at that very moment when I was putting the piece together. But in a way, it's not necessary for the spectator to know those personal things behind the pictures. I think it's enough to be able to observe certain typologies. For instance, the figure seen from the back, which is a very dear motif to me that appears and reappears again and again in my work. That, of course, has a reference in, in painting, particularly in the German romantic painter Caspar David Friedrich, who very often painted human figures in his landscapes. The figure seen from the back, I really like it because it's, it's free of all confrontation, of all aggression. It's an invitation to a shared contemplation. So when the spectator is watching the picture, when there is somebody else in the picture already watching the landscape, it's like an invitation. Like, come on, join me, let's watch together. I most often work when I travel, and I most often travel for exhibitions. So if I have time, I always bring my camera and I do some new work, because what I most love is to see places that I have never seen before. Then I feel like my, you know, I'm, I'm so happy, my eyes are so satisfied to, to see new views. We get so blind to, to our everyday environment that it's hard to get inspired when you see the same streets every day. L'Arche de Vue, uh, in a way, it's also a travelogue. It shows the places where I went to during a couple of years while I was working on these photographs. We have everything between my native Finland, we have France, we have uh, Norway, um, we have Devon in the UK, we have the Dead Sea, uh, that's the furthermost place I think in the series. Let me have a look. Um, Iceland, of course, Iceland has a big presence in the, in the series. At some point after having used myself in my images for you know, almost 20 years, I felt that I have come in sort of a dead end. I felt that I had used all the positions I can put my body in to like uh, back and frontal and both profiles, sitting and standing and laying down. And I could not come up with a new way to present this body of mine without repeating something I had already done over and over again. So I was like, hmm, what should I do? It was the first time I experienced a sort of writer's block. And then the solution to this writer's block actually came from René Bloch, um, the curator that 
you know very well in Arta because he has been working on, on the collection for many years, already before the museum existed as, as this new form, this new building. So I had worked with René on, on several exhibition projects already since um, 2005. And uh, I went to Berlin to see an exhibition about his personal collection and his archive. And I think it must have been like 2016. And there I discovered uh, the Fluxus events course, which I had not known about before. I saw these papers with these little cards with, with written text and um, funny and poetic and, and strange. And uh, really like uh, when I read them, images started to appear in my head. So they functioned like a kind of like an idea machine or like a, a, a sort of like triggering my imagination. So I asked René, first of all, like, what are these? And secondly, could I use these in, in my work? And he said, yes, you may use these. These are meant to be used by anybody because the idea for, for Fluxus artists was that anybody can execute the piece according to the instructions, which are really open, so you can do it in a variety, in a multitude of, of different ways. But he also said that it's a polite thing to actually refer to the person who wrote the score to say, this piece I made after a piece by, uh, uh, let's say, um, George Brecht or uh, George and B.G. Hendrix or, or whomever wrote the score originally. So then that's precisely what I have been doing ever since, since 2016. I have collected a lot of uh, event scores uh, from the literature, from museums, from different archives. But not only that, I also, because I was kind of immersing myself into the Fluxus way of working and thinking, I have also started to invent my own scores. So in a way I'm following in the footsteps of these predecessors who offered a helping hand when I had a moment of difficulty in my, my own work. And I'm very grateful for that. I think it's wonderful to be able to kind of build upon what people have done before. So in a way it's like a, they are like my uh, self-appointed teachers in this art school that I have invented for myself. One video in the exhibition is called Wind Music. I'm standing in an open landscape and I'm holding a scarf in my hand. I'm completely immobile, but there's wind, so the scarf is moving in the wind and it's shot in slow motion. So you see this very beautiful undulating, wavy movement of the silk scarf. And um, it's like measuring the wind speed. You know, when the wind goes down, the scarf goes down. When there's a little ruffle, then it goes up again. And I shot this piece with the idea that somehow I would like to translate the visual information into sound. I did not quite know how to do it. So I kept the footage for a number of years. I shot it in 2017 and it was only last year in 2022 when I finally found a way to, to complete the piece and exhibit it for the first time. So actually I asked help from two people. One is a computer guy who analyzed the movement of the scarf, its position on the y-axis of the coordinate system so, so that gives sort of the pitch. And then he analyzed the, the surface area of the scarf, because when it, it, sometimes it opens more, sometimes it goes kind of into a more narrow form. And, and then the surface area is actually determining the, um, the breadth, if you want, of the, of the sound or the sound information that we, that we hear. Basically what we have as the, as the, the kind of 
the bottom information, uh, the sound information here, is um, something called a spectral chord. It's a microtonal chord where uh, we have several musicians who have played on the string instruments these very, very tiny intervals that when you add them together, it becomes like a, they call it a spectral chord. So it, it includes all these microtonal intervals. And this chord is then taken as the uh, source material, which is accentuated uh, on different frequencies according to the position of the scarf on the y-axis and then the, the surface area of the scarf. So what we hear is what we see. Music has been something which I often reference in my work. Large de vue already, it's a musical quote. And then in the recent videos too, I've been interested in how to play with the notion of, of sound and image. I have a couple of new videos in the exhibition that are called musical pieces. Um, there is musical piece Akureyri, which is shot in Iceland outside the city of Akureyri. That's why the title, where the title comes from. And it's a very simple approach. There are um, three electrical wires that traverse the, the pictural plane. And I'm standing below and I'm throwing snowballs in the air. And actually it's not a video, properly speaking, it's more like a slideshow. It's a separate photographs that I have taken so that in each picture the snowball is in a different height uh, uh, according to or in relation to, to the electrical wires. So it forms like a score line and uh, then the snowball is like the, the note which determines which tone is then played. And the, the, these tones are played on a, in pizzicato on a, on a viola. So it became, becomes like a cloud of bouncing sounds in the end of the little piece. I have another musical piece called um, Chromatic Scale. There I was, I was doing what I, what I most like to do in, in life. I, I'm walking somewhere out in the nature carrying my camera and looking for places. Actually, I'm looking for a possible stage where an action could take place. So I was in, um, in northern Denmark and uh, on the shore, I found these, these funny cement, like these round little kind of like cubes and they made me think of organ pipes. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm standing uh, I take turns to stand in each pipe and I take a picture when I'm there and, and that becomes like a scale. It's the chromatic scale because they happen to be 12 of those pipes. It was just a coincidence. And then of course, according to the uh, 12 tone technique in composition, you can organize your 12 tones in, in any order and that's called a row. So composers have used different rows, 12-tone rows in, in their compositions. And I selected eight uh, different rows from different composers from their different compositions. Uh, and in our exhibition at Arter, we selected one by Alban Berg in his violin concerto from 1935. In the exhibition, we have one video which is called Gelbe Musik. It's also an homage to several people. I'm, um, I'm flying a kite there, and the, the Fluxus score behind the piece is by Geoffrey and Vichy Hendricks, and it's called Fly a Sky Kite. So that's precisely what I'm doing. But it's not... Uh, whatever kite. It's a kite that I made myself. It's a kite because it's actually a plastic bag, a bright yellow plastic bag, which I just tied on a string and then I'm walking with the bag that flows in the, in the wind. This bag comes from a very uh, particular place, uh, from a shop called Gelbe Musik, which means yellow music in German. 
And it was the shop of Ursula Bloch, the wife of René Bloch, who was um, selling and exhibiting experimental music, records and scores and ephemera by artists who often were Fluxus artists who were also working with her husband, René Bloch, in René's gallery. So um, the, the bag of the shop of Ursula, it's just this, this plain, solid yellow, uh, which is the, the, bears the, the name of the shop in a way, or it represents the shop by its appearance. I know that Gelbe Musik, she chose the name because it's also a score or, or a piece by some other artist, but I cannot remember whose piece it is. I wrote an email to René to ask this morning, but he hasn't replied yet. I will tell you later whose piece it is.